And welcome to the castle, everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own superhero using the Sentinel Comics RPG system. Let's get to it. Now, before we get started, there's a couple things that we're going to need before we start fleshing out our superhero. The first and the most important thing we're going to need is the Sentinel Comics role-playing game called Rulebook. You're obviously going to need that so you can follow the steps. The second thing you're going to need are the actual character sheets. Now there's two pages, one with general information and the one that actually lists our powers and different qualities, as well as our hit points for that specific hero. You're also going to need some dice. Uh, you're going to need at least a d6, a d8, a d10, and a d12. We'll probably use all of them, and I have two sets just in case I have repeats that I need to start rolling. Um, but you won't need a d4 for any of this, or a d20. So, we'll keep that set aside. And once you have everything ready, you're going to go to chapter 3, which you can tell because it has the light blue section, or edges of the pages. And here we are, chapter three, creating heroes. And there are about eight steps that we're going to follow through. And the eight steps are right, listed right here on page 41. And there's two different methods of creating your hero. You can just take a look at all of the rollable tables and just pick and choose the different powers and qualities that you want for that specific hero. Or you can do what we're going to do today, and that is the guided method. So we'll go through each of the steps here, listed on page 46 and we'll just roll on each of the rollable tables and kind of configure everything until we actually have a superhero. The background determines where your hero came from before they became a hero. And so we're going to roll 2d10 and for this we actually get to take either a straight die roll from one of our d10s or we can take a combination of the two. So let's go ahead and roll and see what we have. So I have an eight and a seven. So my seven is academic, my eight is tragic. And if I take a combination of the two, we get 15, which is an exile. Hmm, very interesting that. So on this page specifically for backgrounds, we'll have a, the actual title of the background and we get some of the qualities that are really good from that background. That's what we'll be able to opt into. And then we have the principal category that we get to list on our sheet, as well as the three dice that we're going to be rolling in just a second for the next step. Except unless you're academic, then you get two dice. And it also lists the page number that that specific background is located on, which we'll be referring to. So for now, we need to choose whether we're going to be academic, tragic, or if we're going to be in exile. And I think we're gonna go ahead and choose possibly academic. That sounds like a very interesting choice. So what we're going to need to do, we need to take a D12 and a D8, and we're just gonna have those on the side and ready. All right, with that said and done, we do need to go ahead and list it on our character sheet so we can refer to it later. I'm actually going to skip a lot of the general background information stuff, like our hero name and our alias. We'll figure that out as we finish up our hero. So for now, we have our background underneath the characteristics. We're going to go ahead and write academic. And notice that we also have a spot for the power source, archetype, and personality. So all of that will be listing there. If you have enough room, I would also recommend writing the page number for that specific background so you can refer to it later. So the academic, let's take a look here. We assign a D12 and a D8 to two of these qualities, either leadership, self-discipline, or select from the information qualities category. We can choose an expertise principle, starting on page 127, and then we'll, we will roll a D10 and a D8 for the power source selection. First thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and take a look at the information qualities category. So for qualities, we will actually go over here to where it says powers explained, and we're going to keep flipping until we see qualities explained. So we actually have two different sides, um, powers and then the qualities. We have the information qualities right here. We have the criminal underworld info. We have deep space knowledge, history, 
magical lore, medicine, otherworldly mythos, science, and technology. So let's see, what are we going to opt into? Those are actually pretty good choices for our hero that's in an academic background. For our qualities, I think what we're going to do, we need to assign two of them. So possibly leadership, and then we're going to choose either technology or magical lore, I think would be pretty cool. So maybe having like a like a Doctor Strange type character or maybe like an Iron Man slash Tony Stark type character would be pretty cool. Leadership is going to go first. And I like to assign my dice after we pick our actual qualities or powers. That way I have a better understanding of where I want to go. And for the information, let's go with technology. All right, so we have that there. And now we need to assign a D12 and a D8. I'm going to assign the D8 to the leadership quality. And then I'm going to assign the technology to the D12. There we go. So let me explain real quick. In Sentinel Comics, the RPG, you actually roll three dice for any test that you do. So for example, if I have a power that, gives, that has the uh, D8 quality, and if I'm using some my technology quality, I use a D12, and then let's say that the status die is on D10, I would use a D10 um, for that roll. So then I would have my three dice in my pool. I would take them and I would roll them together, and then I would sort them out from least to greatest. So this three right here for my D8 would be my minimum dice. This 8 from my D10 would be my mid die. And then this D10 from my D12 would be my maximum die. And some powers will actually have you use your max die. Some will have you use your mid die. And some will have you use your minimum die. And some powerful powers will actually have you combine all three to make a grand total. So now that we have our two qualities, we get to choose an expertise principle starting on page 127. All right, so we have our expertise principles right here ready to go so we have the principle of clockwork the principle of the gearhead history indestructible of the lab mastery mentor powerless science speed stealth strength tactician and whispers so there's a lot that we can choose from here and each principle gives you an ability a green ability that you can use and it also tells you uh, a better way of role playing that specific character with that principle. So these principles are all about being good at stuff. Your hero has some level of knowledge and practice, a skill or trait that they have internalized in some way. I think we're going to take the principle of the gearhead. I did take a look at science and I did take a look at lab. And you know what? If we're going to go with a Tony Stark type of character, I think gearhead would best apply to that. So, the principle of the gearhead ability is an action. Overcome a technological challenge and use your max die. You and each of your allies gain a hero point. And hero points are powerful things that you and your allies can take. And you basically use those to, in the moment, to become a little bit more powerful. Or at least to succeed a little bit better. So, we're going to take principle of the gearhead. And so, that will actually go on our first page for principle of, and then we'll just fill in the blank there. For the sake of simplicity, I am just going to write the page number in the game text, but in the PDF that I will put in the description down below, I will actually have this all listed out for you guys. So there you go. Principle of the Gearhead on page 127. All right, let's go back to our step. Take a look at academic and see what else we get. Roll a d10 and d8 for power source selection. So here we get to determine where our powers come from. This would be pretty interesting um, since we're a technological gearhead. But nevertheless, let's go to the next step. 
And so we have our power sources and they work just like our backgrounds. We roll our dice that we just got from the first step and then we can take a combination or a single die from that roll. So, for example, I got a seven and a three. So three is genetic. Very interesting. Um, we can make that work with our gearhead. Um, 10 though is tech upgrades, which is what I would get if I took a combination of seven and three. And seven is a relic. So I have two very interesting options when I'm talking about a technological superhero. I could take a relic, maybe it's like some sort of a ancient power suit, or I can be an actual gearhead and upgrade myself with these um, sorts of techs. And I think we're going to go ahead and take tech upgrades. So we're going to combine our two dice to take tech upgrades. That gives us a signature vehicle, signature weaponry, any athletic or elemental slash energy, intellectual, mobility, or technological. We're going to go ahead and write that in on the first page of our character sheet. And just like with backgrounds, we will go to the page number that it's listed, which is 64. So we have tech upgrades, and here is where we get a lot of our powers from. So, you have technological upgrades and implants that give you your powers. Let's see, assign all the dice you rolled at the end of the background step to any of the following powers. So I rolled a d10 and a d8. So that means I have two dice to actually assign to any of these uh, powers. So I could take a signature vehicle, signature weaponry, I can select an athletic power, element or energy power, intellectual power, mobility power, technological power. So let's take a look at the different powers real quick because we have a lot of categories here. It would be very easy to take a signature weapon or a signature vehicle. We would just take that and then we would describe what specific vehicle or weapon it is that we have. But for the categories, the power categories, it's a little bit different. So for powers, we have athletic, so we can take agility, speed, strength, or vitality, and these work just like backgrounds. We would assign a dice to it, and then when we make our skill check, we would, we would take a power, a quality, and then take whatever green, yellow, or red die that we happen to be in for the status. For elemental slash energy, we would take cold, cosmic, electricity, fire, infernal, nuclear, radiant, sonic, or weather. Interesting. We have intellectual powers, so awareness, deduction, intuition, lightning calculator, presence. We also have access to mobility, like flight, leaping, momentum, swimming, swinging, teleportation, and wall crawling. And then we would also have technological powers. The last one, gadgets, inventions, power suit robotics i already know what i want we're going to take power suit we, you have a technological suit with a variety of built-in functions that sounds very much like what i want from my uh, awesome character right here so that's going to be one that we'll take so we could take signature weaponry and maybe we can have some sort of a melee weapon that we can use or maybe like a gun sort of but I think I'm also going to take elemental and energy powers. And we could use something like electricity. Nuclear would also be fun as well. I think would be funny. Actually, let's go with that. We're going to take a power suit that can manipulate atoms and stuff. <laughs> Sounds pretty OP to me, but that is what we are going to do. We'll go ahead and we will write that on the second page for our powers. And once we have that, we do need to assign the actual dice for these specific powers. And so I rolled a D10 and a D8. So let's put the 10 in power suit. And we're going to put the D8 into nuclear. So there we go. Pretty awesome stuff right going on right there. Next, under tech upgrades, gain two of these yellow abilities, each using a different power. So, this is kind of what got me the first time I created a character, but 
Let's take a look at Energy Burst, the first yellow ability. Attack multiple targets using, in parentheses, power, using your min die against each. So I would need to select power. So for example, attack multiple targets using nuclear, using your min die against each. So whenever I use Energy Burst, I would be taking nuclear, the D8 that I assigned to that specific power, as one of the three dice that I would roll. We also have access to recharge, boost yourself using power, then either remove a penalty on yourself or recover using your min die. Techno absorb, when you would take damage from element slash energy, you may recover that amount of health instead. And we also have tactical analysis. When attacked, treat the amount of damage you take as a boost action for yourself. I think there's two very clear ones that I really want here. We're going to take energy bursts using nuclear and we're going to take recharge using our power suit. I think those would be the two best options for us. And so what we would do, we would go ahead and list those under our yellow abilities since we're gaining two of them. All right. And so one of the things that the book highly recommends is that you actually rename your powers to better fit your hero. I kind of like Energy Blast, so I'm going to keep that. And maybe later on, I'll go ahead and change Recharge to something else. But that also kind of fits what we're doing. So, so we also gain one of the following green abilities. Indiscriminate Fabrication, Boost Using Power, Assigning Your Mid, Mid, and Max Dice to three different bonuses one of which must be given to an enemy. And then we have Organi Hack. Attack a target using power. Hinder that target with your min die. I think we're going to go ahead and take Organic Hack, and we're going to assign Nuclear to that one. That way we can hinder our foes with a little bit of some nuclear radiation or maybe some sort of nuclear power. Last but not least, we get to roll for the next step. We need a d10 and two d8s for our next selection. So let's get that ready and let's head on to step number three. All right, for step number three, we have archetypes. Your archetype is how you use your power and how you generally operate as a hero. Most teams have a variety of archetypes to ensure they all serve different roles on the team. Let's take our three dice, our D8 and two D or our two D10s and our D8, and we'll go ahead and roll them. All right, we got a five, a six, and an eight. All right, let's take a look and see what each of those gives us. We have blaster. Okay, we have close quarters combat. And then our eight is flyer. So for each of these, we can take a combination of two dice and combine them as well. So for example, if I take the five and six, I get 11, which is sorcerer. If I take the five and eight, it becomes a 13, which is transporter. And then if I take the eight and six, it becomes 14, which is minion maker. And I kind of like the idea of having either a blaster or Actually, I think we're going to go ahead and take Blaster. It would have been, for me, it would have been either Blaster or Flyer. Now, right here, it does say that Elements slash Energy is required for Blaster. So make sure you either have that or that you are picking it up before you actually opt into that. Don't forget, you're going to need to keep these three dice because you will be assigning those dice to the powers that are coming up for Blaster. Assign one of the dice you rolled at the end of the power step to an element energy power. If you already have an element slash energy power, you can skip it, add a different element energy power, or swap the die with one of your new dies. So our element is D8. So what we can do, what we're actually going to do, we're going to opt that, bump that up to a D10. So one of our dice is going to go away and we're going to upgrade our nuclear energy to a d10. Alternatively, since we already have it, we can choose a different elemental or slash energy. 
and that would also give us more options but I kind of like the idea of just having nuclear so we're just going to bump that up to a d10 this is probably why you don't write in pen then we get to assign one of the following remaining dice to one of these powers or we can assign any remaining dice to any of these qualities all right there's a bunch so we have signature weaponry we have our element slash energy powers category which we've already taken from we have mobility technological and then from the qualities we have mental and physical so let's go over to the powers explained and let's see for powers let's take a look at mobility so mobility is flight which i might be considering and taking because if we have a power suit i mean why why not fly we also have technological which we did take one from last time in one of our last rules which has gadgets inventions and robotics i think we're going to go ahead and take flight so now we have like some rocket boosters in our heel of our power suit that we can just go ahead and use to fly and let's take a look at the qualities that we have access to, mental and physical. For mental, we have alertness, connection, creative, conviction, sorry, creativity, investigation, and self-discipline. We also have access to physical, which gives us acrobatics, close combat, finesse, fitness, ranged combat, and stealth. We're going to go ahead and take investigation. So maybe we're like some sort of an investigator as well. Hey, you know, having all this technology, like a power suit, would definitely make that a little bit easier. So we're going to go ahead and take investigation as a quality. So we still have a D8 and a D10 to go ahead and assign. I think for flight, I'm going to go ahead and assign the D8. And then the D10 is going to go to investigation. Just kind of round things out a little bit. So we get two of the following green abilities underneath the blaster and each of which uses a different one of your powers from the blaster list above so we have exploit vulnerability attack using power if you attacked or hindered that target in your previous turn use your max die in this attack disabling blast attack using power hinder using your max min die danger zone attack multiple targets using power use your min die against each and then precise hit Attack using power, ignore all penalties on this attack, ignore any defend actions, and it cannot be affected by reactions. So since we have uh, elemental powers in our blaster category, I can actually go ahead and take either, actually we also have a power suit from the technological powers category as well. I can take any of these powers and assign them to any of the green abilities that I have here. So when we're taking a look at our abilities, what I would like to do is actually get a good spread from our powers. That way that each of my powers I can actually use an ability with if I need to. Let's see, Organi Hat kind of already does something similar to Disabling Blast. So we're probably going to skip that. Exploit Vulnerability would actually flesh quite well with Organi Hack. So I think we're going to go ahead and take that. Exploit Vulnerability and we're going to use our Nuclear. And then, so what I'm thinking of doing, we're going to go ahead and take Exploit Vulnerability, and we're going to use Nuclear and Precise Hit, which will use our Power Suit, so we can ignore their defense if they happen to be defending that round. In addition to that, we gain two of these yellow abilities using diff two different powers. We have energy immunity. If you would take damage from element, which would probably be nuclear, you have a related power for. Instead, reduce that damage to zero and recover that amount of health. Heedless blast, attack multiple targets using power. Use your mid die against each target. Take irreducible damage equal to your mid die and imbue with element. Attack using power, use your max die. If you choose another hero to go next, boost that hero using your mid die. So I'm going to go ahead and think about which of those two that I'm going to take. So you can see that I've chosen two different yellow abilities. I've chosen Energy Immunity and Heedless Blast. So Energy Immunity is going to use our nuclear tag that we've got. And Heedless Blast 
is going to use flight. So that's going to be the first tag that actually uses flight right there. And so basically I can just see our little Tony Stark dude just flying around and hitting people. And then of course he's going to take some irreducible damage as well from that as he smashes into those bad guys. So once we have that, we're going to go ahead and take our 2d10 and head on to the next area. Or actually, we need to choose an esoteric principle, so that's where we're headed. And then we get to roll 2d10 for our personality. Here we go, esoteric principles. A hero with one of these principles has something more than a little strange about them. Okay, we're off to a great start already. We have Principle of Destiny, Energy Slash Element, Exorcism, Fauna, Floral, Future, Immortality, Inner Demon, and Magic. Sea, Space, Time Traveler, and Undead. The obvious choice is definitely going to be the Principle of Energy Slash Element, which will be Nuclear. So you have an affinity to, or a love of, nuclear energy. You can interact with that energy with ease. Our minor twist is what other energy slash element is currently causing your powers to go on the fritz? And our major twist becomes what source of energy slash element is currently dampening all of your power? We do get an ability for that, which is an action. Overcome a challenge involving nuclear and use your max die. You and each of your allies gain a hero point. So it's the only one that really makes sense for us given our technological route. So that's what we're going to go ahead and take. Principle of Space was also humorous. Once we have that out of the way, we will take our 2d10 and go to the next section for personality selection. Your personality is your general demeanor. It is mechanically reflects how you react when under pressure, represented by the status die, and how your presence affects the other heroes even after you've been taken out. So we're going to take our 2d10 and roll those. And remember, we can take either a single die or a combination of the two. So I rolled a 5 and a 3. 3 is impulsive. Very good for our technologically savvy dude. We have sarcastic. Also pretty good. And if we take the combination of the two, we get eight, which is also fast talking. I'm going to go with impulsive. Now for each of the personalities, we do get three different categories. So for impulsive, we have a D6 on the green die, a D6 on the yellow status, and a D8 on the red status. So these statuses are come into play when we actually talk about the scene tracker. When we roll our three dice, we actually take a look at the scene tracker or the status of our health. And whichever one is lower is the, stat, is the status die that we actually use. So for example, if I'm using my nuclear power, which is a D10, and my technolog technology quality, which is a D12, Let's say that I'm at full HP and the status is green. I'm going to take a D6 and roll that. And those will become my three dice that I roll for whatever skill that I'm doing. Or maybe it's a check, any kind of check that I'm doing. So we have six, six, and eight. And let's take a look at what impulsive gives us on page 101, which is actually the next page. So impulsive, make up a quality based on your history, on your hero's backstory. Assign a D8 to it. So we'll think about that as we progress along. Upgrade one of your power or quality dice by one step to a maximum of D12. Sorry, you don't get a D20 if it's already at 12. And then we also have an out ability. So whenever our hero gets knocked out, we can actually still help out our allies. So for example, the hero who goes directly after you may take one damage to reroll their dice pool. They're usually just, they're not quite powerful, but they could definitely help out. They're more of support type um, abilities. So you can see a couple things. I have added my quality, which I just chose smart, and I assigned a D8 to it. And 
I refer to the page for the out ability and the last thing we get to do here, we're going to choose two red abilities from the list in the next section. So here we are on the red abilities and we have our different categories for our powers as well. Um, just to make note that we do need to actually have a die assigned to um, one of these categories before we can actually take a red ability. So for example, um, any of these elemental energy powers we can actually take because I have the nuclear power tag um, from the elemental slash energy um, section. And so I'm going to definitely go ahead and take up charge to blast and we're going to assign the nuclear tag to that ability. Taking a look at the different powers, I'm also going to go ahead and take full defensive so we get to hinder ourselves by rolling our single power die, probably going to be our power suit. You are immune to damage until the start of your next turn. You cannot use this ability again this scene. Alright, so we have our two red abilities. Now we get to move on to the next section, which is retconning. So for retconning, we get to do one of the following. And this is kind of a way for us to kind of reflect back on our hero and make any changes that we want to within certain restrictions. So some of the options that we have available to us, we can swap any two dice within our powers, swap any two dice within our qualities, Choose a different power or quality used in one of your abilities. Add a d6 power or quality from any category. Increase your red status die by one size. Change either of your principles to any other principle. Or gain an extra red ability, as described in the previous step. So looking at the different power tags, I think we're going to go back to technological and since we get to assign a D6 to any power tag of our choosing, I'm actually going to go ahead and take gadgets would be a fun one. You have access to a wide variety of useful technological tools for any given situation, generally built by somebody else, uh, maybe not. You can invent your own technological tools and have some of your own inventions on you at all times. Robotics would also be pretty fun as well, but, I think in the long run, uh, inventions will probably be a little be a little bit more versatile for us. So we're going to go ahead and choose inventions as a power tag, and we are going to assign a D6 to that. So our HP is decided by a couple different factors. We get to add up the following numbers. We start with eight the maximum value of your red status die, which, let's take a look, is eight, so we're at 16. The maximum value of any one of your athletic powers or mental qualities, if you don't have any, then it's a D4. So we have investigation, which would be our D8. So there we go. So we have eight plus eight plus eight, so we're at 24. The roll of a D8, or we can choose to take uh, uh, just four right there, but I'm gonna go ahead and roll. And we rolled five, so we're at 29 HP. Ugh. All right, well, that's the way it rolls sometimes. So what we do, we actually take a look at the health quick reference table right here. We start on 29, and so we have three different health values. One for our green status, one for the yellow status, and then one for the red status. And there's a health range. So our green health range is 29 to 23. If we go to 22 or between 22 and 11, then we're in the yellow status. And if we go into 10 to 1, we'll be in the red status. And there are some other factors in there that will also determine where what our status is, mainly the status tracker if we're actually doing a scene like that. But for now, we're just going to kind of put it in our head that whenever we're in that specific health range, that's the third dice that we're going to roll. And then last but not least, 
we get to put the finishing touches on our hero. And so this will be where I go in and describe what our hero is wearing, what his uh, power suit looks like, um, what he looks like inside of that power suit, and everything else such as that. And so that is how to create a Sentinel Comics superhero. Fairly easy and very intuitive. I actually really like um, going through the different options. And of course, you don't have to do the guided method. You can just pick and choose which qualities and powers you want. Like if you already have something in mind, like if you want to build like a Wolverine type character or even like Deadpool or Black Panther, then you can go ahead and just pick those qualities and stuff that best fit it and just put them in the character sheet and go there. But of course, consult with your GM before you do any of that because you don't want to break the game. So thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to post a comment down below. And if you've already made a hero, go ahead and post that too. Go ahead and give this video a huge thumbs up to support this series. And I will see you guys in the next video.